If you've watched any of my past videos about yield farming and providing liquidity in the world of DeFi, then this video is going to be a fun one for you. But if you haven't, I'm going to leave a list of videos in the description below that will be immensely helpful to you before you watch this video. I'm going to skip over explaining a few complicated topics like liquidity providing and impermanent loss, but you can watch my specific videos on those before learning in this video how Bancor has improved in some of the weaknesses that I've mentioned in those videos. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that anyone can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to explain what Bancor is, how it offers single-sided liquidity staking, and even something crazy called impermanent loss insurance. Let's dig in. First, let's go over a quick overview of Bancor. Technically, Bancor ICO'd in 2017, raising a whopping $153 million worth of ETH in under three hours. BNT, a token associated with Bancor, was one of the very first ERC-20 tokens, and Bancor itself was the very first automated market maker, a form of a decentralized exchange. Now, I'm not here to talk about the history of Bancor, or explain how AMMs or DEXs work. In this video, I want to cover some new ideas I haven't covered on the channel before. There are three topics that I want to discuss in this video about Bancor regarding their current version 2, which is soon to be upgraded to version 3, but that'll be another video. We need to get these ideas explained first before moving forward. Forward. And before we dive in, I would like to thank Bancor for sponsoring this video. Number one, single-sided staking. So the first idea that is worth explaining is that Bancor allows single-sided staking. This doesn't mean you have to provide one asset like Chainlink, and then the protocol takes half of it, sells it for ETH, and then provides both the Chainlink and the ETH to a liquidity pool like some of the other tools out there do. Bancor does not do this because they realize that it does something that not every liquidity provider wants. It forces you to have half of all of your assets in the pool in ETH. In fact, the Chainlink community is kind of passionate about only holding link tokens, and they don't want to give up their exposure to be able to provide liquidity. Bancor solves this issue with true single-sided staking. How does it work? Well, Bancor still has liquidity pools, but here's how they work. First, you provide some link tokens to the pool. Once you do that, Bancor actually mints a new token called BNT to fill the other half of the pool. For example, maybe you give them $100 of link, and let's say BNT at the time is worth $2 each. Well, Bancor will actually create 50 new BNT tokens so that the pool is now 50% of link and 50% of BNT. This way, you've only provided link and you only have exposure to the link tokens that you've provided. Now, I know what you're thinking. Doesn't that create a crazy inflationary market? They're printing BNT tokens almost as fast as the US prints dollars. Well, you may be correct about the second half, but whenever someone withdraws their link tokens from a pool, the BNT tokens originally minted by the protocol are then taken out of the pool and burned, meaning they are destroyed and gone forever. In reality, they kind of never go into circulation. Also, trading fees earned by the protocol minted BNT are also burned for BNT upon the withdrawal of the associated user's stake. Now, let's say you wanted to trade link to ETH through Bankware pools, right? You'll technically be making a trade from link to BNT and then from BNT to ETH, which makes BNT one of the most liquid and the most traded tokens in the history of crypto. Basically, on Bancor, all trades are routed through the BNT token, actually generating a fee each time for users and for the protocol. One secondary benefit of this is that all traders pay a fee for their trades. Well, since the Bancor protocol minted half of the liquidity for each pool, it means they are entitled to half of the trading fees that were generated. And since BNT is traded a ton, this leads to quite a growing sum of cash in the protocol's treasury. You might be asking, where does that money go? This brings us to the next amazing Bancor feature, Impermanent Loss Insurance. Bancor offers a unique feature called Impermanent Loss Insurance. If you don't know what Impermanent Loss is, it's quite complicated and I highly recommend watching my video on it, as you'll definitely need to fully understand it to appreciate this feature. So, along with a fee that traders pay to make trades on Bancor, Bancor also takes a percentage of all the yields earned by users who provide liquidity, and they use that to grow the insurance fund. Now, just like car insurance, you pay monthly to protect yourself if something really bad happens. Well, with Bancor, you effectively pay 15% of the trading fees that you earn as a liquidity provider into a pool that protects you and your fellow liquidity providers from impermanent loss. 
As mentioned, Bancor also uses fees earned on its own BNT supplied to its pools to help fund its insurance payouts, and after covering the cost of insurance, it then burns any excess fees for BNT to keep the total supply in check. It is worth noting that the BNT supply has been deflationary since the middle of 2021. To help you understand how this insurance works, let's run through an example. Let's say you're providing 100 LINK tokens as liquidity. Well, over the next year, you earn some amount of LINK from the trading fees, so now you should have more than 100 LINK tokens, right? Not quite. Let's say the LINK price has significantly outperformed the market as you hoped it would. Due to the way that liquidity pools and impermanent loss work, during LINK's price rise, your principal deposit of LINK is sold off at a discount for the paired asset so that your cumulative stake may actually be worth less than if you simply held the paired assets in your wallet and maintained full exposure to your LINK tokens. You were expecting to withdraw more LINK from the pool since you were hopefully collecting LINK from the fees, but you are actually left with 95 LINK due to your earned fees being decimated by impermanent permanent loss, and now the permanent loss having eaten into your principal link deposit. That may have sounded really complicated, but what it means in clear terms is that you lost 5 link due to impermanent loss. This happens all the time on all kinds of different DEXs. Well, Bancor makes an interesting deal with liquidity providers. They say, provide liquidity with us and you'll never have to worry about pulling out less link than you put in. We'll track the number of tokens you originally deposit and ensure that you get back at least the same value whenever you withdraw, plus the trading fees and rewards earned on your stake. However, in exchange for this service, liquidity providers are simply asked to pay 15% of their earnings to Bancor. So if you provided 100 link tokens and then earned 10 link as rewards, you'd pay 1.5 link tokens to Bancor's communal insurance fund and then basically be entitled to get back at least 108.5 link tokens. The other part of Bancor's insurance is funded through fees that the protocol earns on the BNT that it provided to its own pools. In other words, Bancor mints BNT to buy liquidity in its pools. The liquidity not only matches user deposited stakes and supports single-sided liquidity, but it also earns the protocol BNT and non-BNT tokens, which help fund the protocol's insurance payouts. If the total fees earned on the protocol provided BNT are greater than the protocol's impermanent loss payout, Bancor can cover insurance payouts without giving out any new BNT tokens. Long story short, the result is that users can stake with confidence knowing that they'll always get back at least 100% of the tokens that they originally deposited, while also passively collecting more of the tokens that they've staked through trading fees. Sticking with the LINK example, if an LP deposited 100 LINK tokens, no matter what the price movement of LINK is, they're always owed and will be able to take out at least 100 LINK tokens plus the fees that have accrued on their stake. Now, sometimes Bancor may not be able to give you all of your tokens back in LINK if the pool has suffered a large amount of impermanent loss and it hasn't accrued enough LINK trading fees. Instead, Bancor will give you as many LINK tokens as possible and then pay out the rest of the insurance with an equivalent value of BNT tokens. Now, just like with car insurance, if you go out and you total your car, you don't necessarily get the car fixed, but the insurance company will give you enough money to buy a new car. Bancor is basically doing the same thing with its insurance idea. They just print more BNT tokens to cover the insurance payout. Now, the great thing about both single-sided staking and impermanent loss insurance together is that you can actually provide link tokens and passively earn more link with 100% exposure to the upside of the token while also being protected from any impermanent loss you'd experience on another platform's pool. One thing I do want to note about the insurance feature is that currently you must provide liquidity for at least 100 days to receive the full insurance protection. Though I do hear that's changing in Bancor 3 when full insurance protection will basically be instantly offered whenever you provide liquidity. But that's for the next video. The last thing I want to mention is how these two features create a unique opportunity for Bancor. Since the collapse of DeFi 2.0 narrative, new protocols and DAOs out there are looking for places to basically provide liquidity safely and profitably so that their users can trade with the tokens efficiently. With a few of the laws out there, it is actually legally risky and maybe even illegal for a protocol to sell half of their supply and then use that capital to buy Ethereum to then effectively provide liquidity to Uniswap. With single-sided staking, a DAO or another project can simply supply their own protocol minted tokens to Bancor and never having to worry to sell their token to supply liquidity. It can provide the same amount of capital fully in their own native token because Bancor provides the other side with its BNT. Right now there are actually over 30 DAO treasuries that have committed to providing liquidity to Bancor and have already reaped the benefits. Some of which are Polygon, Yearn, KeeperDAO, BarnBridge, and Engine. I think we'll see the impact of this idea in the future as Bancor
Bancor becomes a place that many DAOs use to provide liquidity in their tokens and earn passive protected yield on their treasury funds. So that kind of wraps up how Bancor works. Let's get into the specific tokenomics. First off, BNT isn't a governance token on its own. You need to actually stake BNT in Bancor in order to get voting rights to vote in the Bancor DAO. Whenever you stake your BNT tokens, you technically receive the BNT, Bancor's governance token. One could say that Bancor technically has a proof of stake governance model. This means that all voters not only have exposure to BNT, but they also have skin in the game as liquidity providers on the protocol. In other words, all the voters in the Bancor DAO are both BNT holders and liquidity providers. While compared to decks like Uniswap, token holders who do vote on the changes don't have to be liquidity providers. This basically means all BNT holders will be voting in a way that is most likely beneficial to all the other liquidity providers. While on the other hand, Uniswap holders will vote in a way that's exclusively beneficial for the Uni token and not necessarily the liquidity providers. Even more so, the tokenomics of BNT are a little tricky, so I'm not going to cover them too much in this video, although one of the developers explained to me that BNT is sort of like an index of its deepest pools, since all the tokens must pair with BNT. At first glance, some users might get worried by the protocol's single-sided liquidity system, which is constantly minting more BNT to match the stakes coming into the system, but that's fine because the protocol minted BNT is used to earn even more BNT for the protocol, and ultimately both of these are burned. It's also worth noting that Bancor has a great revenue model to collect tokens that fund its insurance model and help make it sustainable. Like I said, overall the specific tokenomics of BNT are difficult to explain, although in my opinion, Bancor is a very interesting project with a bunch of unique ideas. This kind of wraps it up for what I have in this video about Bancor, but soon I'll be working on another video about Bancor v3, which makes improvements on all of these ideas and I'm quite excited to explain it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope that you've enjoyed it, I really hope that you've learned something, and most of all, I hope to see you in our next video.